Chapter 4 Planning As nights go, this had to go down as one of the worst nights for many years, might be something from the meeting yesterday that triggered some bad memories. Must have woken up around 6 or 7 times, sweating and having flashbacks from when the terrorist scumbag in Ireland tried blowing me away. The nightmares even managed to throw something new in, just to add to the mix. While driving undercover, the car I was traveling in arrived in an ambush and was blown up while crawling from the wreckage, some bastard shot me. Now, while these three events had occurred within two weeks, they have never had them appear in the same nightmare, which sounds like a plot for a book. The time was now 6 o'clock, so time to drag my sorry arse out of my pit and grab some strong coffee, god I needed it this morning. Did not intend turning the computer on first thing, but with so much to organize, an early start was required. Another brew was in order while the computer boots up. Really need to purchase a new one. This one is getting far too slow. The first task was to check out the flight times for reaching both St. Bethany and the island of St. Halb. A quick search on the internet also brought up a small ferry that runs on demand to St. Halb. We'll dig into this a little more as, it might come in handy if the float plane is grounded for some strange reason. They say better to be over prepared than under, as the old saying failure to plan is a plan to fail. The advantage of being a travel agent, I knew where to look for the best flights, and the ones to St. Bethany were not a bad price. Shame I can't reserve them there and then as need the gelp first. Looking at this logically may be necessary to separate our party, with me going on Wednesday and Simon and George flying out two days later. We'll run this past the boys when we get together today. That is the flight sorted now to book a hotel. From what I could find, only three hotels were in the vicinity of the airport and close to town. We're going to spend a few nights here, so why not take time to relax for a while? Let's face it, at this point, nobody will be aware of why we're there. Still, we need to blend in as tourists, so no benefit of picking the two-star accommodation. From the photos, this could well be a pleasant hotel, but furthest from town. Located in the direction of the north of the island away from the coast. Hotel Osprey looked ideal, a three-star property in the center of a town called Phoebe, near to local shops and not far from the beach in a small port. Best of all, they had rooms free for next week, again need money to complete the booking, now I wish I had grabbed some dosh from Simon yesterday. Spent the next hour looking over the maps that Henry provided, need to be as familiar as possible with the layout of both North and South Island, hate surprises. From the maps, I can now deduce that on the south part of the Northern Island, there is a creek. An excellent place to hide a powerboat if we need it. Located on the left of the bridge and out of view might be plan B for our escape, maybe the long way around, but better the long way than not at all. Still, a few hours until the meeting at Simon's place and it is only an hour away on the other side of town. Plenty of time to nip into town to purchase some stuff we will need for the job on the way. Located at the end of the high street was a hardware store where I could buy everything we needed in one place. Better be safe rather than sorry don't want people connecting events, so we'll acquire them from different shops. Another sunny day, so I walked to town, gave me time to mull over possible plans and scenarios in my mind, without listening to everyone else's problems on the bus. Like poor Jenny who got stuck in a lift, now claiming she is suffering from PTSD, unbelievable. I arrived at the store in no time. From here, I was going to require some clothes pegs. About 10 should do it, along with a reel of small low voltage wire. Next onto the stationary shop, which is at the other end of the street, where I was going to need a box of drawing pins and a pack of cheap big type pens. Only two more shops and I should have what I needed, for now. Don't want to create a paper trail so better break this shopping up and take a rest. Waited for around for about 30 minutes before continuing with a purchase of tiny ball bearings and some high breaking strain fishing line. Not wanting to leave behind a card trail ensure I used a mixture of different debit, credit cards and cash in all the shops. To the untrained eye what I've purchased won't turn anyone's heads, especially when I carry them through airport customs on the way to St. Bethany. Would be right of course, I could be a tourist who may be doing a spot of fishing while on holiday, it is what I can do with them when used together that counts. Shopping over, I'd better make my way to Simon's place to meet him and George, to start making plans of how we are going to remove this gang of people from Henry's property on the island of St. Halb. 
Arrived about half an hour later, George was already sitting outside with Simon around a cast metal patio set situated on a paved part of the garden to the right of the cottage. No change then, with you two starting on the beers without me again, anyone going to fetch me one? So, what did your last slave die of? Came the instant response from Simon. Not doing as they were told. I replied. In the fridge, if you want one help yourself. Thanks, I will, anyone else want top-ups? No need to ask where this was located as I had been here several times since we first met at combat stress a while back. The kitchen was on the left on entering the cottage. To the immediate right was a small living room decorated in the same color paint Simon had painted the walls some years back. Grabbed a handful of cold beers from the fridge before joining the other two in the garden. Anything else from Henry? Not yet. We'll contact him once we finalized our plans and on the way. Simon's cottage was located at the edge of town, away from any other signs of life or houses as he was one for the tranquility and peace of living, so it was safe for us to discuss our strategies, nobody around to eavesdrop. Wasn't long before the conversation turned to business. I checked the flights to St. Bethany along with a hotel which will suit our needs until we arrive on the island of St. Halb. Think it would be best to stop any suspicion of three men traveling to St. Bethany together, we should split up. What do you think? Why would anyone suspect three buddies going on holiday would be anything else but that? What are your thoughts on this, George? Think Steve's right, remember the person who followed us to our meeting with Henry. Okay, separate flights it is. Replies, Simon. My flight leaves on Wednesday you two follow on Friday, as the flights only go Monday, Wednesday and Friday. We'll make all the transport arrangements when I arrive home. Can you give me some of that dosh, Simon? Once I'm in St. Bethany and settled into the accommodation, I will check out the local surroundings in case we need to hide out here for a while after the job. Did some research on the internet and discovered a small boat company were running on demand trips over to St. Halb. Plus, the float plane only went once a day with a departure time of 10 o'clock. We'll wait for your arrival before checking out the underbelly of the island for possible purchase of any weapons, in case, Katie and Cody can't deliver. Got the maps handy, Simon we need to do some planning? Simon brought over the map and laid it on the dining table. Skip the park getting from St. Bethany to St. Halb until we arrive and process more information. Let's start with our arrival in Jal on the South Island. We're going to need somewhere to base ourselves until we can establish comms with Sam. Why don't we call him from Phoebe? He can meet us when we land. Excellent idea, George. We all agreed, yep. The less time we spend hanging around, the better. To start with, once we've met Sam, he can take us to his place, and he and Abby can give us more information on the island. From what I discovered so far, Henry's place is at the end of this road that runs through the rainforest, surrounded by a high fence complete with a large gate, guarded with armed guards and pooches. Over to you, George, you're our dog man, any ideas yet on how we're going to take out the dogs? Been thinking it over since we met Henry, got a few plans almost sorted in my head, going to need to witness the routine of the handlers etc. Thanks, we will leave this part to you. To the left of the property, there could be a hill covered by rainforest which should give us a fantastic observation point overlooking the residency and the grounds. From the map, we can see a dirt track leading around the back, terminating near the beach. This will need confirming once on the ground, we're going to need transport. This leads us to Simon. You're our motor guy, you drove a tank which has an engine. Therefore, it makes sense you manage all our transportation requirements. Once we've met up with Sam, you need to sort out the Land Rover Henry mentioned and ensure it is not going to let us down when we need it. Part of your role will be to check any routes that will enable us access in and out of the property and back to the South Island. Take a look here on the map, what appears to be several tracks may need to complete a recce and find a way across this inlet. It might be possible to hide a small boat here in case we need it for our escape. So, we are all in agreement once on St. Halb we are going to do three separate observation posts for at least two days each. One here which I will take on top of a hill, George, will conceal himself at a location where he can monitor the comings and goings at the gate, paying particular attention to the pooches and their handlers. Of course, locations will be confirmed once we have a better understanding of the lay of the island. Your role, Simon, will be dropping George and me off then, as discussed, finding the best route in and out, 
before concealing yourself in the Land Rover somewhere over here where this side of the property can be kept under surveillance. Let's break this down into more details once we are on St. Halb and speak to Sam and Abby. Any ideas on the escape plan, gents? I personally think we should consider at least three plans for our withdrawal. First, make our way at high speed back to Jow, where we would have a boat waiting, which could be hidden here at this location where Simon is going to find a way across the creek. George pointed at the map. Is that a boathouse? Bet you anything, Henry will have a vessel of some sort stored here. We can ask Abby when we meet. Good idea. Don't think there's anything else we can plan until we arrive on the island, apart for what to wear on our little trip. Would recommend plain clothes, no logos, or other silly messages, such as the man I witnessed earlier who was proudly displaying a t-shirt with I drink because I can across the front. This may seem funny and witty, but it will make anyone stick out like a sore thumb when describing you. The first thing they usually say is something like, the man was wearing a green t-shirt with the words I drink because I can. Plus, we are all going to need some warm and waterproof clothing for the OPs. Take that stupid grin off your face, Simon, the Land Rover doesn't come with a roof, you're going to be soaked as well if it rains. Damn it, I'll go and get some more beers then, might as well be wet on the inside as well. Fantastic idea, starting to become a bit dry. I say, pretending to cough. Let us park the planning for now while Simon goes and makes us something to eat. No problem. Does sausage, chips and beans sound good? Excellent choice, Simon. Do you have brown sauce? What do you think this is, a fucking cafe? Yes, and with that attitude, you're not getting a tip either. Now the donkey walloper is busy making breakfast, any ideas on how we do the observation posts, George? Yes, think we should be dropped off at least two kilometers away from the actual location. This gives us time and space to move in, ensuring we are not seen. Makes sense, mate will find out more about the target area before confirming anything. I purchased some equipment that could be used as IEDs, these can be used to alert us if we are spotted, and if they try to creep up on us, now all I need to do is acquire some sort of alarm and earpieces. Let's take a gander at what's in the bag then, Steve. I empty the contents of the bag onto the table. That's no good, just clothes, peg and wire. More here than meets the eye, George. As I explained how to make an IED out of the items, Simon came back with the food. That didn't take long, mate, thanks. Grubs up, George. Have you seen what this idiot can do with some household items? Remind me not to piss him off. Think that's cool? Wanna see me make a tilt switch out of this big pen? Time was now getting on. I'll have to go if I'm going to book the flights and hotel. Simon. I will need some of that dosh, so I can make the bookings. Plus I will need some spending money. Can do better than that, here is 10,000 pounds each to start with. Best we take all our costs out for the job before dividing up the rest. With that, I left the boys and headed back home, it was going to be a busy day tomorrow, 